Hi everyone, my name is Danica Joan and welcome to Monday, Monday Night's Custody Matters Live. Uh, today's topic we're talking about is step family dynamics. So step family dynamics, uh, it, it is, it's something that a lot of times the step families uh, or remarriages that involve uh, children and, and so forth can actually be kind of blow up in people's faces. They think that, well, okay, I made a mistake the first time and and now I'm gonna try to make it all better. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna do it right this time. So, of course, we all go into a situation, a new marriage, any marriage, with hopes that it's gonna be a forever uh, kind of situation. And maybe even if it's an, a, sub, a subsequent marriage, we think that it's something that uh, we learned a lot of lessons. We learned what not to do, and and all that. And and we think that we are setting ourselves for we we have more wisdoms going into the second marriage. However, and when I say marriage, that doesn't necessarily mean a wedding and um, a official official union. When I uh, speak of a lot of times, the family dynamics are. Um, it's it's the structure of a family. When we're talking about a co a, a blended family, a step family situation, it does not require a marriage to create a step family. It basically means that you've got children in the household with uh, two adults that one of them is not their biological parent and they're not their adoptive uh, parent and and so forth. They're they're uh, they're in relationship with one of their biological parents. So that consider that is considered a blended family or a step family. And step families really need to be taken taken in a different approach versus trying to 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 model it after the you know the nuclear family, the original family and you know with with bio mom, bio dad and bio kids. That it's, it's really something that's altogether a much more complex situation. I know that in my uh, situation, I became a stepmom and thought that because I had, I used to teach elementary school and I had an amazing relationship with these elementary school kids. And even though I had gone through my, my turbulent years with my own children and going through the divorce and stuff like that, I thought, well, you know, I don't have, uh, any history with these these children, my new stepchildren, and I thought, well, you know, surely they're going to have, I can develop the same, at least the same kind of closeness and relationship that I have with my students. However, little did I know that that was just not going to be the case, it's because there's so many dynamics that that involve uh, a blending a step family. Um, for one thing, there's allegiances, there's loyalties, and maybe it's not even the parents that are that are generating the the feeling. I mean, really, in a perfect world, it would be great if the step both bio parents were on board and supportive of the step parent. Because to be honest, being a step parent is a thankless job, and many times step families don't even get to the point of of um, of completely blending before they fall apart. According to Ron Deal, Smart Step Families, it, it takes between seven and 10 years to fully cook a step family. It's kind of like cooking up a stew and you have carrots and you have potatoes and you have peas and uh, all kinds of different things and some of them soften up uh, quicker and some take a lot longer to soften up and then blend everything together. So it took, and I would say that before I, I actually taught Ron Deal's uh, Smart Step Families study at my church, and I was into my second marriage for about seven years, and then I started teaching that course, and then, of course, everything came to light for me while I was teaching that because I realized that I was in my seventh year and no, and all these things that I took personally around why my stepdaughter did not accept me and why my stepson, you know, they, they treated me 
you know, we, like arms distance and, and, you know, it was just, it was not fun and I took it personally. And then when I went through the program and I started teaching the program, I started being a lot more okay with being with all of the things that were going on. I stopped taking it personally. I started realizing what that was what was operating in the background with with their uh, what what they were dealing with. For one thing, me being a stepmom, I was essentially the replacement in their dad's heart for their mother. So instantly, I become their the competition. And it sort of doesn't really help when you've got all these Disney movies that 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 portray stepmothers as these wicked stepmothers and and so forth. It just makes it much easier. But um, but I just wanted you to get that it does take. It really is not an easy thing uh, to go into a step family, a blended family, and also the the most important thing as the bio parent is to be supportive of the step parent. Like if you, with your ex, they decide to get in a relationship and understand that that girlfriend, that boyfriend, um, it's very careful, the you gotta be careful the language that you use. If you um, kind of uh, take the personalization out of there and call them the girlfriend instead of your your father's girlfriend or uh, just just stripping them of 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 humanity that really I mean the kids kids are smart they pick up on it and if they do not if and you continue to if you continue to plant seeds like that um, you may get a little bit of um, you know a little bit out of it a little charge out of it a little bit of mileage out of that out of those comments and the way that you handle things and even your child may feel like well wow I've got to really like be in alignment with that my parent on this because I don't want to hurt their feelings or whatever but eventually they will learn they will disrespect you they may secretly disrespect you or they may openly disrespect the way that you taught them in uh, to you know a shared with them your hostility or resentment or whatever but understand that being a step uh, once you your uh, a new relationship has brought been brought into the mix with your child that person is technically a step parent they may be a short-term step parent but they are a step parent nonetheless once your once your uh, ex your co-parent has brought them into the the situation and built relationships which brings up another point you really should be careful about how quickly you bring into a relationship because understand that your child has already experienced a loss of a relationship they have seen that when one one person is mad at another person then they then they break up and then of course there's there's a lot of considerations in their mind they're thinking okay well how much what's it going to take for me you know for mommy to be mad enough at me that she'll discard me uh, there's all these just things that go on in, in the background of a child's mind and heart that um, that were considerations that never really did, people don't really think about until we go through a divorce or you know a custody split or whatever um, okay so back to getting into a new relationship and introducing that that person into your child's life now I get that that person has gotten really close to your heart and you want to share that person the person that you're really close to you want to share that joy and that bond that you have with that with your new partner with the the love of your life, your child. However, you want to make sure that you're not setting your child up for a subsequent loss. Because eventually they start putting layers up, put walls up of protection. Because they're, you know, typically when we break out, we get rid of our boyfriends and girlfriends, we don't necessarily keep them in our lives. So that's different from a friendship 
where we introduce our child to a friend, maybe a long lost friend that we haven't seen in like ever, and they may see them once and then they go back up north somewhere. Um, this, there's still that knowing from the child, the understanding that, 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 that friend, even though they only got to see them once, it wasn't like they, they got, you know, discarded from your life. So, so be really careful, be really discerning about when you introduce a, a, a new love interest to your child. Make sure that they're going to be there a while. You know, that's, that's part of the things that, that um, you know, we've got to protect our child's hearts. Uh, the other thing is, too, is we're setting an example of what kind of relationships or relationship barriers do we want to, we, are we instilling in our child? So if we are putting our child, uh, when we are showing them the example of, yeah, this person we were dating for about three or four months, but they're gone and we don't like them anymore, or, we, or maybe we didn't even say that. Maybe we were, we were discerning enough to not really, to kind of sweep it under the rug. But the child picks up on it. They ch pick up on the fact that there was, there was a, a boyfriend or girlfriend that came into my parents' life and they were doing lots of things with, but now they're not doing them in, with anybody. With, they're not doing those things with that person anymore. And then there's another person that shows up. So I know that a lot of times uh, children who are going, who've experienced divorce with their parents, there is a bit of a hesitation to get into a really solid relationship of their own. And, um, you know, it can go both ways, but I have seen it where they're really hesitant about, well, is, is marriage forever? And do we really want to get married or we just want it because uh, my parents' divorce was a nightmare or that kind of thing. So just really guard your, your child's heart and uh, your, your new love, love interest will understand they really, and if they don't understand, then maybe you need to reevaluate uh, the the boundaries of that new relationship. Um, I know that sometimes it takes a little bit of time. I, I use this example this in my co-parenting classes is when you you really do need a gap of time between relationships, and it can be really hard because a lot of times when you're going through the pain and the suffering of divorce, we sometimes lean on different kinds of things to, to numb things, to comfort us and stuff. Sometimes we get into another relationship because we just need the comfort of another human being that show, that cares. Uh, sometimes people, it's very very predictable that a lot of times people are going through a divorce, they do resort to, to drugs and alcohol for a time, hopefully uh, not, not to justify it or anything, but it just is. People get in, they do things that just sort of like numb the pain. So speaking of relationships, when we go from one re um, ending one relationship, a marriage or whatever, we want to make sure that there's a gap of, of time so that we can kind of have almost a resetting period. The way I see it is if you don't give that amount of time, space, you'll end up going, jumping into a relationship that mirrors your last relationship. The way I see it is, you know those memory foam mattresses and how they, they use the example of pushing your hand down on the memory foam and then when you lift your hand, you, it still has the handprint on the memory foam. But, but you have to just wait for a time before that memory foam goes back to solid flat. Otherwise, if you don't, the only thing that fits in the crevices of that spot on the memory foam is something of its exact match. So just use, think of that analogy when you're, you're trying to shift out of what you might feel is, was an unhealthy relationship uh, or whatever, or, um, and you've got to be really careful not to jump into something else because you're gonna jump into what is familiar not necessarily that which is healthy.
and that again our children are watching so um, that is about all I wanted to talk about oh okay so here we go I've got a little bit and I got this uh, from some of Ron Beal's work is there's the different kinds of step families there's the husband with the children he marries a never married with no kids wife <laughs> Another one is, and when again, now when they're kind of defining it as marriage and, and all that, but I, I keep it more loose, understanding that um, the relationship for the child is the same. So, okay, so portrait number two, a wife with children marries no kid's husband. Portrait number three, divorced mom with kids marries divorced dad with kids. Number four is widow or widower with kids remarries. And number five is divorced or widowed parent of adult children um, when they marry. So understand that, okay, so when my parents, I grew up in an intact family and then it was when I was in my mid twenties, I'd already started my family and uh, I was in my mid twenties when my parents decided to call it quits on their marriage. And my dad pretty quickly got into a new marriage and, um, and it's been successful and I'm very blessed to have my stepmom. However, the things that I got from it, from the, ch from the adult child of uh, a parent who parents who got divorced and and then one that got remarried was I felt this allegiance this this loyalty conflict not because of what anything my parents said that's the crazy thing is truly my parents they handled it the best they knew how but they but because I was an adult they didn't feel like that they needed to address a lot of things probably because they didn't weren't even aware that there were things to be addressed however it was my experience as an adult child of divorce that my um, I, I had it in my mind that my mom didn't marry so my mom my dad replaced my mom with an, another woman and I wouldn't want my mom to, to know that I had a health a, a healthy loving relationship with my stepmom because I didn't want my mom to feel bad and I'm telling you in my early 20s you'd think that that I would be past all that but I really could get in the in the uh, in the mindset of what a child must experience and you know a child um, doesn't think through all of these things as much as an adult hopefully but um, I can imagine, and now I understand why it is that my stepdaughters and my stepson um, kept me at arm's distance because I was I was their mom's replacement. Um, there was just it, and it was not necessarily that it wasn't the truth, but it was maybe from the child's perspective. No matter how old the child is, they there is that feeling of that loyalty conflict. So, uh, but anyways, I just, um, something to think about when considering getting back into the dating scene or, you know, if you've, if you already are remarried and you wonder why there is so much conflict, um, maybe just a tug of war with the child, the child not accepting your, your, your new spouse or whatever, um, there's definitely a lot of dynamics that are going on and I would, def, I would highly, highly encourage you to look into the blended families, the Ron Deals program. I know it's, uh, it's Christian based and um, I, but I, but the principles are the same no matter what your back, backdrop ground or your preference the principles are the same in regards to the dynamics of blending a step family so uh, that's all I have for you tonight I um, if you have any questions or any concerns just private message me I'm always there um, I do I do this I also uh, coach uh, go through I coach people in while they're going through their divorce and custody and stuff like that I'm a family mediator and a curriculum author of um, 
doing that uh, to be of service to you. Um, I know that um, one of the things that I that I noticed on some of the threads is people that vary. There is a concern about the fact that people are um, there's a resentment that that you're going through the courts. The attorneys are making thousands of dollars, and and um, and it just costs a fortune to try to get fairness and equity in the courts and stuff like that. And I know in most of the states, the for, the co-parenting course, the family stabilization course, is required for parents who are establishing custody or going through divorce and and everything. And I know that there's a resentment. There's a there's a there's an aggravation that it just seems like that there's always somebody with their hands out and an opportunity to to make money and stuff like that and I just I really wanted to address that because it was on the thread um, and the thing is if how do I say this I am I don't make it I don't make money off of doing this family advocacy and fortunately, I'm able to make money elsewhere such that I can do family advocacy. However, there's not everybody is that fortunate. There's a lot of pe people, we do not criticize ministers who get a paycheck for working and being of service to the church. We would never, um, most people would never criticize a, a minister for, for being employed there because if otherwise, you know, how are, how are they going to survive? So truly, even though the, the like I have the online co-parenting program and there is a charge, trust me that it goes into the nonprofit, um, you know, so that it can generate some sustainability and and everything and I and I it's uncomfortable for me to even talk about the money thing but it was mentioned in the thread so I felt like it needed to be addressed that there are tons of um, unscrupulous professionals who are definitely making thousands and thousands off of people's um, heartbreak and divorce but trust that um, in I don't know what's like the $39 or something like that for the online class, $39 for um, education that took months to, to um, you know, curriculum it took months to create is just a drop in the bucket considering the thousands and thousands that um, law professionals and, and all the other people are demanding to try to, um, who are some, some of them, quite frankly, their interest is not to ne necessarily to help make a child's uh, life easier. It's they've become desensitized or whatever from the situation. And um, and when I find a legal professional, a judge, a mental health counselor that whose heart is in the right place, let me tell you, I spread the word. I put it on on Kids Need Both website, I do whatever I can because I, I'm all about trying to make, uh, bring healing to hurting families and if I can be of uh, support because I'll tell you, I would love to be part of making sure that, that I can help somebody else, a good person's career thrive such that they're not, they don't have to resort to something that's not of service. If you understand what I'm saying, um, you know, if a person has to go and um, do, uh, do other jobs to make a living because they can't make a living uh, being a counselor and, and yet their heart is, is to be of service, then, um, then I'm not, I, that, I just don't, I'm not in alignment with that. So, Anyways, so that's enough. I wish you guys a, a great evening, a good week. I will see you Thursday afternoon. If you have any questions, put it in the thread. Talk to you later.